sisters. Peace, fam, and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Tim on Earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Rock. Before I begin this uh, very, uh, what I call a mini series or mini videos, because what I need to speak with us about will take probably three or four videos. I want to give a moment of silence in memory of our brother. Oh, oh man, my tongue is tired. In memory of our brother, Malcolm X. Peace forever. Always remember Brother Malcolm. If Malcolm was physically among us today, he would be 85 years old. What a mistake they made to snuff out such a powerful and beneficial soldier to this cause. And we still have that same mentality today. That is, that is what is rather sickening to me. But even if you study Malcolm, you will see that Malcolm began to see outside of black and white he did not excuse nobody for their evil and their wickedness. But Malcolm was guiding himself or going in a direction where he simply was looking for justice and what is fair. Not looking to be uh, seeking favoritism one side or another, but that simply what is just, and that is what Islam was supposed to be about. It is not about bashing folks, because we bash people for something they had nothing to do with. At least if I was a white man, and you want to blame me for slavery, and you want to, well, at least give me a damn slave. At least give me the benefit of what you're accusing me of. I'm not rich. I don't have big skyscrapers, skyscrapers. I don't have nothing. So if you're going to call me evil and you're going to call me wicked and you're going to call me this, that, and that, then at least give me the benefit. That's why, that's the same thing that I say about this white people calling black folks race, racist. If you're going to call me a black racist, then at least I need to have the, give me the benefit of racism. Let me take you out of your European name and give you an African name. Let me educate your children into the African way of life. Let me enslave, no, not let me, I'm going to enslave you for 300 some damn years. And I'm going to make black the superior race and make white the inferior. If I'm going to, if you're going to call me a black racist and a black supremacist, then I need to then give me all the benefits that go along with it. Then because you don't like what I say, then I'm a racist. Get the hell out of here. Ain't nobody going to go for that. And if we're going to call white people devils and evil and wicked, and these who live today, then give them some slaves. Give them, give them some, some of the benefits of what you say they are, you accusing them of. Otherwise, we really need to shut up. And that's why some of y'all black power liberation folks are falling out of love with me because I will be with Malcolm. We are going outside. I will fight for my people. I will fight for the justice. I want us up out of this horrid condition. But we must do these things in a fair 
honest and just manner. Otherwise, we are like those who we complain about. We have become just like the oppressor himself. And then we think this type of behavior is going to somehow turn around and make us better. It's going to make us worse. Because we become like the oppressor, the, a, a black version. We are already like them. We are already dark European. We already have a, that slave mentality. All of us are Uncle Tom. So why some of y'all running around talking about uh, you are Uncle Tom and she are Uncle Tom? We all are Uncle Tom because we were all born and raised in America. We were all European. Uh, European uh, we have all been made Eurocentric. <laughs> Woo. We all have been made Eurocentric. You're just recently trying to find your black or African self. This is new. And by your behavior your, and your ideology, you only copying the white man, except now you give it a black spin. So how does that make you better? How does that make you greater? And I'm pointing these facts out, and if Malcolm was here, I'm very sure he would put the same thing out. I love my people. The number one priority for me is to reach out to my own and clean my own house up. But when it's all said and done, all of humanity is in bad shape. But how can I ask all of humanity, how can I go tell this white man this or this Asian man that? When my house, our people, we in bad shape. You got to clean up your own house first. And we must be just. And we must show compassion and understanding for the pain and the hurt of other people. Just like we expect for them to look upon us the same. Of which they have not been doing a good job. That's why we must do these things. Some of y'all come to my page because you like how I talk about white people. That's not what I'm about. If the truth or if this talk and speak the truth mean that I have to hurt Caucasian people feelings, then so be it. If speaking the truth means I got to hurt our feelings, then so be it. It ain't about what I like or dislike. It's about what is the real truth. That's what it's about. That's what you got to understand. I'm not here to look for stuff to make us look good. We don't need nothing to make us look good. You know who you are. You know what you're about. You don't need nobody to give you high self-esteem. Those days are over, black man. We know we are great. We come from a great people that have done great things. Even here in America, we have accomplished a lot. But now it's about justice for everybody. It's about the upliftment of us because we low on the totem pole. We need to get into the groove. We're supposed to be free. We don't act free. We continue to act like slaves. That's why it's a top priority for us. And we are still lost, made deaf, dumb, and blind. So there's a big priority for us. But don't think I'm here to just bash white folks. And the white man does this and the white. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that because we already know. And y'all white folks that get upset, that's a personal problem. Because we need to remind you of this evil, this atrocity. Because they say, those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. Are you like your fathers? If you're not like your fathers, then why don't you shut the hell up? What you complaining about? We're not talking about you. But see, you know your actions and you know what you're doing and how you behave. You're just like your father. You just, you just upset because you don't have that whip. Because I know for a fact somebody like me probably been lynched a long time ago. Somebody like Sarah Sutton said we've been lynched a long time ago. Y'all got rid of Got rid of us because you don't want us to affect the rest. So now you helpless. You're like, damn, I want to lynch this cat. Oh, I want to castrate this dude. But see, 
the government, you're powerless. So you really don't know what you can do is come on YouTube as a faceless image and complain. Sorry ass. But I want to make that perfectly clear. I'm not about, I'm not just about black this and black that. I'm about justice for all. That's what we should be about. Unless y'all planning on getting rid of all, then you don't have to worry about it. I think that's being tried, but clearly it don't seem like that's a very successful venture. My time is out on this video. Now I'm going to get into the to the uh, subject matter at hand. Well, this is that was part of it, but stay with me, y'all. Hold on. Going to the next video. To be truthful, this is not really an issue because many of those of you of whom are pro-black revolutionary, pro-black nationalists, and though I don't have no problem, really, it's just a few dumb asses that come to my page with these silly comments. Because, see, some of us who are in black liberation, black power, we are flexible in the mind, and we understand things. We can comprehend what we listen to, and we can comprehend what we read. So really, I don't, this is not about, this is just a very small percentage. And I just wanted to bring this up because I wanted to answer the idiots. You know something, I shouldn't call them idiots. They just, they just don't understand. They are lost and loyal to a certain belief system or political ideology. I, so I'm not, you know, I should not call people names. Because when you don't understand something, you know I mean, why should I call you stupid because you don't understand something? Or you can't co comprehend what I'm trying to tell us? Or you really don't see what I see? Because your mind, you know, how can I expect a kindergartner to understand algebra? They can't comprehend it. It's beyond it. They don't know. And if they make fun of you doing your algebra, why? I mean, it's, it don't make no They just not on our level. So for those of you who are on my level, those of us who have, who are beginning to climb the ladder of black conscience, then you understand what I'm saying here. But I want to talk to those who don't. Maybe they need a better explanation of what is going on. So that is what I'm going to offer here. Please, I apologize. I don't mean to call nobody these infantile names. One, of, This is a comment that I would like to address. This comment says that for some reason I have joined. It is sad that somebody as pro-black as myself have joined the gang of people to make excuses for the evil of Caucasian people. <laughs> I'm an excuse maker for white people. Ooh, what the hell? Oh, man. Why would I attempt to make excuses for white folks or anyone when I have countless videos reminding Caucasian people of their history that is bound in atrocities. Not only against dark people, but white folks have done a good job of terrorizing themselves. If you are a student of history, you know that already. Please also remember the key word is white people in power. The others are just influenced by the elite and those who are in power. So they are nothing but robots and slaves. They don't know, they're just doing something because the big boys are saying it's all right. We give our A-OK, -okay, this is how. And then, of course, with the help of religion, it's a done deal. I'm talking about these Caucasian people in positions of power and influence. These Caucasians that you see every day walking around, most of them, as you notice, some of them can't barely pay their mortgage. They are alcoholics, dope fiends, etc., etc. They don't control nothing. They are being exploited, they are just as victimized as we are. It's about the Caucasian people in power. 
the regular Caucasian person, Joe Slow on the street, he don't have the knowledge. You can tell by the comments that they leave on my pages. You can tell by the comments they leave on your pages. They don't have the knowledge or the ability to comprehend what it takes to become a world power. They are just being used by those in power. So really, we waste energy and do ourselves a disservice to direct our anger to all Caucasian people because they have been conditioned and exploited and tricked and deceived just as mentally ill as those who were physically enslaved and now turned voluntary slave, dark versions of their oppressors. That's why I call us dark Europeans because we are black or dark skinned, but in our mind, we have the mentality of our oppressor. I don't care how much we say, Assalamu alaikum, I don't care how much we say, Hotel Black Power, when you really look at it, we still have his barbaric, racist mentality. Except we are trying to be dark versions of him. Either we are taking his mentality in order to try to benefit ourselves by making things that were, that's all white, all black, or either we want to bow down to him and try to be a black version of a European, Caucasian. White folks don't need my help to make excuses for them or to defend them. They control the media. They are perfectly capable of defending themselves. They don't need my help. However, we are not used to real truth. We are not used to self-thought. Most of y'all base y'all thoughts in some kind of religion or some political idea. If your truth don't produce hurt, then perhaps you need to take another look. If your so-called black supremacy teaching or pro-black teaching if there's something in there that ain't causing you some kind of pain, just giving you emotion and happiness, then it must, something is wrong. You need to take another look at it. Because I am pro-black. I love black people. Do you think it is easy and it's a wonderful thing for me to say something good for those who have enslaved my people, terrorized my people, castrated my fathers, lynched my fathers, to try to, say, to admit to something that seems like it's beneficial to them, so that hurts me. But if I represent real truth, and I represent justice, and what is fair, then I got to forget my own damn feelings, and I got to say what must need to be said. Because it's not about me. It's about the acquisition. Y'all say that you're looking for the truth. Or are you just looking for just something to satisfy your own self-grandiosity? It's not about me. It's about what is good for black people as a whole and the human family in general. It ain't about how I feel. Who give a damn about what I feel? Because what I feel and what you feel gonna keep this condition that these other things have done to us you gonna keep it rolling. You gonna keep feeding the fire. We need to take the fuel away from the fire so that damn fire can get to the point where we can put it out once and for all. We need to get this beef off our back once and for all. And that's what I'm about. And sometimes truth hurts. These racist Caucasian people have an incredible wicked history. Do you believe out of all people we would, you know, I would make excuses for evil. I don't make excuses for slavery and atrocity and people being murdered and slaughtered for material gain. Are you out your damn mind? I'm not going to make excuses for that. But real truth causes us to look at things with less emotion. 
You, we need to look at things in a way as, as being emotionless as possible. These uh, external influences so that we may examine the reality of our situation. Emotion hinders the ability to think properly. We don't want that. That's why we continue to be drowning in this damn hole. Because we're thinking with emotion. When we go to church, it's about emotion. It's not about thinking. It's about emotion and entertainment and having fun. We don't think. Feeling good. That's what drugs is about. You don't have to think. Take the drug. Feel good. Go outside. Go into a false reality. We need emotion hinders proper thinking so that we can examine the reality of our situation. Because if we don't, this so-called race war that some people talk about it may just happen, and it may happen very soon. Not for the benefit of the black, not for the benefit of the white, but for those, I guess, who happen to be Caucasian in seats of power. It'll be good for them. So they can bring into what some people call their new world order. <laughs> we should not want more murder Pain and suffering if it can be prevented. And stop senseless slaughter. We should not be like those of whom have oppressed us. As they denied us justice, equality, and that which is fair. When we act or behave like just persons, justice and being fair, would be contrary to the belief or political thinking we become loyal to. Again, truth hurts. If you believe I, if you believe that the reality is temple represents bashing white people, then you need to go somewhere else. Because we are seeking freedom and justice and equality for the entire human family and treat animal life as well as this planet with respect as many ancient persons done prior to European domination and influence. I do not, and it is not the intent of the Realities Temple to make excuses for evil and deceit no matter who it is. However, if we judge, then let us judge fairly, taking in all the facts into consideration, or we risk becoming just like the tyrant, or becoming a tyrant himself. Hatred has caused you and I to be like those we complain about, having no concern to being what is just, what is fair? <laughs> the, the comments continue to say that the reason why I am making excuses for Caucasian people or becoming, I guess, their defense attorney is because somebody has brought some kind of fear to me. If I don't fear God, and y'all say God is the creator of the universe. If I don't fear death, I accept that as part of my reality. I don't care. Because death is inevitable. So what? If I don't fear death, if I don't fear God, who the hell, what can you say or do can cause me to fear, to make me be other than myself? For some reason, I got to defend white folks. I was locked up in a mental institution. They threatened to hurt me for 10 years. And I did not fear them. 
Whatever will be, will be. I will not accept your damn lie. So it's going to take a whole lot if you want to try to get some fear out of me. I'll never tell you that I don't uh, have a, that I want to die early or I want to be hurt up. That's not what I'm saying. But your threats and somebody fearing to take me off what I know to be the best path, that's not going to happen. Just like I did not allow them to use fear tactics to force me to take medicine I know I didn't need or to force me to admit to a crime I know I didn't commit. So I don't know where you get that crap from. There's one thing that we do fear. There's one thing that I do fear. And that is my inability or my refusal to accept real truth when it comes to me. Because truth sometimes comes to us outside of our thinking. And we don't want to hear it because it don't fall in our box. But since I am outside of the box and because I'm flexible, I want to accept what the truth is. Not what makes me feel good. What fits my agenda or what I believe benefits me. When real truth, when it presents itself, we must put our own personal likes and dislikes down because clearly what we like is wrong or is error. The human family continues to suffer and display behaviors of self-destruction due to the refusal to accept real truth when it is presented to us. Instead, we hold fast to these popular religious and political ideas of which and no matter what form is the root cause of our very problems and the continuation of this horrific condition black people and all of humanity find ourselves in? The troublemaker that we must rid ourselves of is a system designed to make lighter humans superior over darker ones. In fact, the darker humans were called subhumans or inhumans. This system we call white supremacy. White supremacy was designed by the elite, not the cats that y'all, white people that y'all see walking up and down the street. White supremacy was designed and made by the upper echelons, the elite, the intellectuals of the, of the white race. From white supremacy, they created race, this idea of race. It was designed to separate human beings based on skin color because the other things such as language and culture was taught too diverse and too numerous. Within white supremacy, the lighter was made superior over the dark so the white elite began to teach their people and conditioning them to believe they were the superior race. In fact, the only human were Caucasian. All other dark people were considered subhuman or savage. As they grew into power, these Caucasian people, they even began to allow those who they call subhumans to live among them. But they developed systems to keep the dark people in an inferior servant-like position. They made laws that denied them the uh, right to read and write words. They denied them uh, the right to worship a god. And they created educational venues to teach white superiority. And later the savages would learn how inferior they really were. The black slave was denied the knowledge of himself and turned into a beast of burden. And now a walking dark version of white people. This is why I call us 
so-called African Americans, I call us dark European. Because in reality, that's what we are. We don't know nothing about no Africa. We don't know nothing about no Hebrew Israelites. We don't know nothing about no Moors. We don't know nothing about none of that stuff. The only thing we know about is what we were given and born into, and that is a racist European mindset. Matter of fact, many of us copy our oppressors because we don't like black either. We don't know nothing about our African roots and we don't care. We don't give a damn. We want to get closer and be like our white oppressors and get close to their children. Because in our minds, we think that we are Caucasian. Caucasian European. No matter how black some of y'all might claim you are, if you watch very closely, I don't care what your name, your name could be Shaka Amaram. You'll see that Shaka is no better than Toby Johnson. Now the only difference between Shaka and Toby Johnson is that Shaka is making an attempt to try to find himself, trying to find his roots. While Toby is trying to get as close to his master as possible because he has self-hatred and he has this idea if you can't beat him, then join him. So he want to get close to his master. Those, you know, since he thinks that he's Caucasian, he wants to get close to the real thing. In this society, it's designed to make the lighter superior over the darker. In that society, then, it produces what we call racism. And those who are of color, those who are of the color, of those of the race that's in power, that benefit or influenced by such system is called a racist. This is why blacks cannot be racist as they do not control no function of the lives of white people. Period. Hold on, you're going to the next video. Racists or ignorant whites want to call black people who dislike the evil they or their ancestors have preyed upon us racists. Because the only thing we're telling you and reminding you of your history and your hypocrisy of today. Because you said that you're not like your fathers. If you're not like your fathers, then how come the condition of racism and racism and white supremacy still exists? And it can't be because due to a small minority of white races, it's got to be a whole lot of y'all out there for this condition to continue. You want to call us racist, but we don't get any of the benefits that white races get. You don't, you don't obey no laws that uh, made designed by black people. You don't have to worry about being judged by all black juries that's going to let your murderer get away with, with his crime. You're not, we're not forcing you, you're not forced to wear an African name. You haven't been a slave to black people and we made money and got rich off of your labor. We don't make you, and you have not been conditioned to embrace African customs or anything of blackness. We didn't deny you the right to, uh, to, to read or write or practice the God that you feel that you want to practice. We didn't make you and cause you to lose your identity, you confused running around here wondering what the hell or who you are. We don't get those benefits, but you've done that to us. If I'm going to be a racist, I want the damn benefits to go along with it. We should not allow racists to define what racism is. Because they want to share their evil with you, but they don't want to share their money and their power and all the good times, but they want to share this, what we all know, and even they are saying that it's bad for us. But that's what made them rich. That's what made them powerful, their racist activities, their evil and their deceit and treachery, murder and rape of not only black people, but all around this earth. 
We should not allow the racist whites to label us like we are like them. Because we are not. And even where blacks are in control in African nations where black people are in control of the government, to my knowledge, correct me if I am, I am in error, but there are no systems in no African nation where we are in charge, where we set up uh, laws to make black or the dark superior over the light. We are not interested and the few that speak about such a thing is only doing it, doing so due to the reaction from being oppressed in such a system where the dark is made inferior to the light. Two wrongs don't make a right, but they feel uh, as though at, at least they feel better about the situation. But are you really feeling better? How can racial superiority help our situation when it was the root cause of our problems? To embrace a black version of white supremacy will only produce the same hell it has brought to Caucasian. Yeah, being a racist has made you rich and powerful, but look at, look at what you have to deal with now. Is it and was it really worth it? We must become opposite of that system. We must be fair, and we must be just, and we must have respect to uh, animal life and the planet itself, and give freedom, justice, and equality to the whole human dynamic. We would agree that what is known as white supremacy must be destroyed. You have Caucasian people that say, it must be, that race racism must be destroyed. We sit back and call this, uh, this uh, racist white people devils. We call them Satan and we call them all these kinds of names. The reality is, you can call a white man a devil, that's all right. You can call them any type of thing. I mean, if you've done evil, yeah, you know, if you've done something evil and wicked, why can't you be called devil? Well, not all of us. Well, that's a, we're going to try to be just. We want to be fair. The, but the reality is, the white man, the racist Caucasian European people, is just a conqueror. You might be mad and angry because you got the short end of the stick, when he came, instead of you kicking his ass, you got your ass whooped. But he's just, he's just a conqueror. They were doing these things prior to him. Let's, uh, let's use Egypt as an example. Are you still with me? Okay, hold on. Egypt was a world power, just like America and the European Caucasian people, they now are in control of the world. How do you think Egypt becomes such a large empire? Because everything we know of starts small. Did Egypt become a large empire? Excuse me, I'm sort of tongue-tied today. I don't know why. <laughs> Did Egypt become a large empire and ruler of the world because it went around to its neighbors and other people that was around it and said, and was nice? And said, why don't you join us? Why don't we get ourselves together? And uh, this will be a nice reunion because I love my neighbor to the west. I love my neighbor to the east. That ain't how it happened. Egypt became a world power and it became as large as it done through violence, through the activity of being a conqueror. If I am in error, please show me and tell me. I'll be happy to shut up and apologize for what I'm saying. That's what they've done. Egypt conquered its neighbors and after they conquered these different people, 
They forced them to serve their God and embrace their culture or be killed. They built the Great Pyramids. Egypt did. Egypt also was the authors of great science and mathematics and architecture and so on. But also was ruthless in the slaughter of others because they wanted to expand. And if you did not want what they wanted, then you were removed and they got you out the way because that's what conquerors do. How can you expand what you want to do with somebody in the way? Either they join you or you're going to whoop their ass. Excuse me. But I think we can use, we can't use ass. Uh, that's not... <laughs> they do it on TV. <laughs> whoop your butt. That's what they do. I am sure those who conquered those who were conquered and killed by the Egyptians did not have pretty words for them. I'm pretty sure they called the Egyptians devils or the spawn of Satan. Any type of wicked name they could come up with for what Egypt had done to them. So for us to call the white man a devil and all like that, hey, that's just, they conquerors. But I don't see what the white man has done no more than what Egypt or any other African nation that wants to expand any conqueror. Africans, and again, please make video responses. And, and you know, show me that I'm, I'm in error. But prior to the European colonization or, or them discovering Africa, Africans was killing and fighting each other Anyway, they were conquering one another. They had their own thoughts and ideas that they wanted to expand, and if their neighbor didn't like it, then they went to war, or they, were, or they needed more material wealth. There was something their empire was growing. They needed more water. They needed more land to grow more food. Whatever the reason was, they needed to get these people out the way. It is like two bullies that get in a fight. Rome was a conqueror. So was Egypt a conqueror. Egypt got beaten by Rome. So now just because Egypt lost and we... Oh, time to run out there quick. Look at that card. Hold on, y'all. All right. Egypt was a conqueror. Rome is a conqueror. They met one versus the other. Now just because we like Egypt, because we feel they were our relatives and we come from them and so forth and so forth, who would you say if Egypt had beat Rome? Then you wouldn't have too much to say, would you? It was one conqueror versus another conqueror. It just so happened that Egypt lost. And then, when you lose, then you become under the foot of those who beat you or conquered you. And the conqueror uses fear and their physical might in order for those of whom they allow to live make you submit to their will. What has happened really to me, this is what it sounds like. This is clearly a case of being a sore loser. And we must give, we must give this racist white fella credit because he came from out of a cave, from a very hostile environment. He, he was fighting vicious beasts, trying to bring stability to his own people. He came from out of a harsh environment. He was fighting and killing. That's all that he knew. So even though the Egyptians was conquerors, they were fierce warriors. They were not prepared for this guy who was used to
fighting wild beasts and living in a cold and barren and harsh environment. They weren't ready for this type of anger and curiosity. Ho ho ho! He's a fighter. That's all the white man knew. The Egyptian was basically living a comfortable life. You know, he had his little fights now and then, but he was not used to the type of lifestyle and type of that harshness that the European Caucasians was living under. He came out of the caves, the white man, this racist European. Well, later he would become racist. He did not develop race at that time. It was just different people fighting against among one another for rulership, fighting over material wealth and domination over others. He came out of his cave and saw all these different things. And he looked at his own condition and was mad why he couldn't have those different things. So he went out to get some of those things. Everywhere he went, somebody was already on the land. It was sickening to him. So he decided, I'm going to take your ass off and take what you got. At the same time, when the white man, remember now, check this out. The dark people, these Africans, Prior to the white man, they was fighting among one another. Then the white folks showed up, and you embraced them. Our people, our ancestors embraced them. You would think this is a strange guy, smells strange, looks strange. You would think they're like, what the hell? And they'd be cautious, but they didn't. They embraced him and was nice to them. Treated white folks like they were long lost friends. They taught the white man about who they were. They taught the white man science, mathematics, architecture, how to take a bath with perfume, all these different things. You would, now what was they was what were they doing with black folks? Killing ourselves. Doing dirty things to ourselves. That's what we was doing to our brothers and sisters on the continent. But when the white man showed up, we wanted to be nice. Then the white man turned right around and kicked us in our butt. Whose fault is that? Whose fault that we wasn't cautious? Uh, cautious? It's our fault. It's their fault. We was killing each other but nice to these people who was a stranger. Oh man, this is, this is sad stuff. You're going to kill your brother African, but you're going to embrace the white man and tell him all about yourself. And so, since the white man know all about you, you probably show him your war tactics. You show him everything about you, so when he come back for your ass, it's a done deal. He know about your war tactics. He know how you live. He know what you, how you believe. You done told everything to a total stranger. Don't that sound stupid? But we don't want to admit. We don't want to talk about that, do we? Who girl? But we don't want to talk how foolish. You can be, you can uh, design the pyramid. You can be the author of great things. Just like in 2010. You got a lot of people who are very smart. They can build computers. And they can send a man to the, uh, into, the, into the heaven, but they can still be stupid. And you can still be a murderer. And you can still be evil and wicked also. You can still be those things and do crazy stuff. Kill your brother, African. Kill your brother, Native American people, because y'all did the same thing when the white man came to America. You was fighting amongst each other and killing each other. And I don't like this native, this red man over here. And doing the same thing that Africans was doing. And look at us. Now all of us had our ass kicked. 
by this strange pale face cat. <laughs> we kill each other. It even continues to today. We hate each other and make fun of one another. Michael X was killed by black people, <laughs> not by whites. In conclusion, I want to say this. Again, we ask the question, if you say that the black man is the original man, then he is like the parent to all those human species that come after him. The white people, according to Greek history, they looked up to our ancestors and gave them great respect. But they also saw their faults. And they took advantage of these faults. Knowing our ancestors did have great knowledge, they attempted to destroy, like all conquerors do, all traces of the conquered. And what the racist European Caucasians could not destroy, then they would embrace as their own and make it like they were the creators and the authors of whatever they could not destroy that was a benefit to the human family and something that uh, other human beings could admire. A conqueror does not give credit for his success to those he conquered. We don't expect white people to give black people credit. He's a conqueror. He's not going to give credit to those from to those who he conquered, because I'm the man. This is my house. You are under me. You are under my jurisdiction. So that's stupid for us to think and, and ever believe that he's going to give us props. We are the conquered. Again, the black man is the original man. We are the parent. And if you have a child in your house, and that child has taken over your house, that child has become more powerful than you, and it happens in some cases, the child or the children run the house. The parents don't. How, as you, as a parent, how are we as the original people, how are we going to get this house back? Some of y'all suggest by physical force, of which is a possibility if we had the uh, help of all of the dark people of the earth. But we don't. Because he is doing his thing, she is doing, everybody is all messed up and confused and divided. You don't have that. It's a possibility. Physical force. Physical force is what placed the European Caucasian as a world power by physical force. Are we like him? <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to finish this up. Hold on now. This racist Caucasian European man in power, his elite, his upper echelon, his smart folks that y'all really don't know nothing about because they stay out of sight. But they run stuff. In 2010, and, and in a recent time period, in our modern age, even though the white man came into power through violence, extreme violence, deceit, rape, robbery, and so forth, he is more civil now. And of course he can be more civil because he got everything. He can be nice guy now. He don't have to work so hard like that. He don't live in caves no more. But he still go to his den. <laughs> you know where that come from, don't you? Because another word for cave is den. A lot of white people have dens in their houses. That comes from their cave days. Because another word for cave is a den. But don't count 
this dude out, just because he's civil, he looks a little bit more peaceful. This European Caucasian loves to fight. He loves to see things die. Why do you think he going out hunting, killing innocent animals? He don't need to meet. He ain't trying to survive. He just like to go out in the wilderness and kill stuff, kill animals. He like to go out and just shoot and destroy and blow stuff up. That's still him. That could be his nature. But that's not all of them not like that. So I don't know if we can really say that his nature because all of them don't carry that tendency and many of them have been conditioned. This is their lifestyle. This is all that they know. Not necessarily mean that it's natural. It's conditioning. And there's a difference between, between being conditioned to do something and something that is natural. Because we have been conditioned to drink soda pop. But soda is not natural. We conditioned to drink soda pop. It's not natural for us to drink soda. It's natural for us to yearn for water because without water, we would die. That's natural. If you don't come correct, you don't have a chance in hell dealing with this guy. Plus, I'm talking about physical violence. You want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Caucasian. At this time, you're not in the position. Because not only will the white man be happy to kill you, but your own people will help him. Matter of fact, they will be happy to get on the front line to blow your brains out. If we, the black man is the original man, and we truly are the parents. We shouldn't always have to, we don't have to use fear and physical violence to discipline our children. As an adult, we should be smarter than the child. Many, many cry for physical violence. Some great race war. Let's go to war, race war. We're not ready for no race war. Where are your gun factories? Where are your weapons of mass destruction? You don't have a chance in hell toe to toe. And like I said, some of your own people will help them. You want physical violence. We, if you are a parent and they are the children, this Caucasian person or people that say, they are nothing but children compared to us. Then we should become the adults. You don't always have to use physical violence, corporate punishment to discipline a child. What the Bible said, spare the rod, spoil the child. Yeah, but what if that child got a damn gun? <laughs> what if that child, what if that child got, got some dynamite and willing to use it against your ass? The Bible didn't take into consideration those factors. And the child will use it on you. Now what's the parent going to do? <clears throat> Many of y'all, the reason why some of us must use corporate punishment, we don't want to spare the rod because we, we don't want the child uh, spoiled. It's because we lack proper parenting skills. We don't know how to deal with this life. We're supposed to be smarter, more intelligent, but we don't know how to, we don't know how to, how to, how to teach properly. We got to turn to physical violence. That shows that you not, must not be as smart as you claim. Kill the white man. Hotel Black Power, get off your ass, get your guns, get your brothers, and let's kill the white man. Study those who holler that type of stuff. You'll see they can't control nothing. They don't. Once you kill the white man, what, what next? They don't have 
have no, they can't, they don't have no plan how to control your destiny or guide your future. They don't control the, their own flesh. They can control their own children at home. White power killed a white man and all this kind of stuff. How are you going to tell me to do something and if you look at these people, they can't control, control their own relationships. They can't control their own children. But they want us to pick up a gun and go out and just and kill folks. <laughs> and these people are ruthless. Because if you want to go that route, remember, these people don't have no problem. They'll drop a nuclear bomb on you. Whatever they need to do to win. You don't understand who the hell you really dealing with. Do we have nuclear bombs? What kind of weapons are that? I mean, come on now. And is it really necessary? If you're smart. Some people, because they are smart, have had guns and weapons on them. But because they learn how to use their mind, they were able to talk the one who controlled the weapon out of hurting them. We must be smarter. Because we don't have the weaponry. And then why go violent when you don't have to? Most parents don't want to hit their children and hurt their babies. They run out of options so they feel the only option they got left is to use physical violence. And if physical violence don't work, they're like, oh, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with bad old Jimmy. Bad old Jimmy boy. The best bomb that you got. The best weapon we got, brothers and sisters, really, is your brain. And the reason why we're not really using our brain, we, we go straight to physical violence because we don't know how to use our brain properly. The brain can come up with ideas and solutions to your problem. The brain is designed to keep us alive. Listen to me. Your brain is designed to keep you alive, not to go out and get your ass killed. But we're not listening to our brain. We're listening to our emotion. Listening to our our uh, anger, and that hinders our ability to use our brain because it's about survival. You ain't supposed to be trying to seek the options to die. You're supposed to be seeking options to live. War and death, those are your last options. Your brain is supposed to encompass and bring to us those things to help us survive, to help us to live. We're not using our brain. You're not using your brain in a proper manner. You're not functioning properly. The best bomb, the best weapon that you have, listen to me, is your brain. And we need to learn how to use it properly and stop being so damn emotional. If we stop being emotional and so damn angry, it'll allow our brains to bring into existence, cause a more clear picture so our brains can find a, a, an appropriate solution to this problem. Nobody in their right mind wants war and violence. This should be the last video. Y'all hold on to me. Bringing this to bringing this to conclusion. Hold on. Nobody in their right mind, I said in their right mind, wants war, wants murder, wants conflict. Nobody in their right mind. So I guess the white people, and some of us too, we are not in our white rights frame of mind. This thing called white supremacy has exploited all of us. It has 
messed up the Caucasian, it has messed up black folks, the Africans, it has messed up Asians and Native Americans, it has messed up all of humanity all over this earth. If you notice, it is even worse now, really, than during slavery. It was always the poor and the middle class whites doing the actual dirt. The upper elite, those white folks, the intellectuals, they're not part of this mess. Think about it, y'all. It is always the poor and the middle class. Nigga, honking, all this old crazy stuff. Lynching each other, hurting each other. And those who are in the top, they ain't involved in this stuff. The upper elite, those who have power and authority, they just sit back and watch the mess go on and on and on. And while we are hollering and screaming at one another, them crackers and them devils and blah, 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 all thing they're doing is becoming richer and more powerful. When I look at the history books, it is always, and I just noticed that, it's always the poor and the middle class, these Caucasians that's doing these horrific things toward blacks, outside of slavery being legal and Jim Crow and things of that nature. Why? Why don't you see rich whites participating? They got a lot of money and food. They can really be doing some stuff to hurt us. But as you see, they're not participating. Why is that? It's always, when it comes to hate crimes and all this stuff, it's always the poor and the middle class. And the rich white folks can get away with it. They got the money. They got the influence. They can kill a whole lot and hurt a whole lot of black folks if they really wanted to. This should tell us something. Who are the whites still behaving in this manner? They are racist. It's the poor and the middle class. You know why? Because they have been deceived and been tricked by their elite and intellectual class to continue a condition so they can continue to, jo to, to enjoy their rich way of life that they got by, that they gained by slavery, by war. And it can be war between two white folks. It don't make no difference. It's, it's war, violence, disturbance, that's what keep these people living the good life. And you help them, hotel, <laughs> black Paul, we, we are helping them live the good life. Many whites do not know when blacks were not available, their own people exploited them. White folks have exploited white people. White folks, prior to God people, look up their history. It's on the Discovery Channel. It's on the National Geographic. White folks have not been pretty and done nice things to white people. Many whites do not know it's part of this big business. And religion is part of it because it helps condition the mind to make you put you in a condition so you are easily exploited. It's all about, it's not about racism. It's not about hatred, y'all. Black and white people, it's about money. It's about material wealth. It's about domination and being God over others. In America, Follow the dollar bill and you'll see the reality. It hurts to know if I was white that my people, that there are people with my color that have become so treacherous. At the same time, you cannot be loyal to someone because of their color when you know they are wrong. And many whites today, they are speaking out. So we can't say all whites this. There are Caucasian people that know that this is wrong and they know white people are behind it. Stop being upset that they wrong, they just wrong. You only hurting your damn self. You want to keep blaming the victim. At this time, black people, we who are born in America, we're nothing but victims. And you want to get on our case about this and that. You should be shaming yourself. The root cause 
is Caucasian people in power. We don't run nothing. We don't make no laws. We didn't design education. We're, no, we're victims of it all. I want to acknowledge these white people that are speaking out. More of y'all need to stand up and stop tripping. Yes, they are your color, but they are not like you. Otherwise, it is all of you. And if it is not all of you, then make your voice known and speak out against these Caucasian people that's in power because it's not black folks. When you see somebody getting upset, they don't march in front of black folks' house. They march in front of white people's houses because that's the one who in power. If they wanted to, they could change this condition overnight if they wanted to, but they benefit. They benefit. You don't benefit being poor and middle class. You're just a tool that they use. And then when they need to go to war, they use your babies to help them in their own personal agenda. It ain't about freedom, democracy, and all that garbage. It's about making money. It is not just and it is not fair to condemn all white people when many tried to stop slavery. In fact, was exploited by rich white folks prior to black commercial slavery. The Irish and the Polish, a lot of them was mistreated by their own, by own white people. But when they became accepted as Caucasian, then they turned. They stopped. They forgot how it felt to be oppressed. And now they joined the oppressor making fun of black people and all this kind of madness. You should be shaming yourself. The key word, the key word here is evil. We have become a victim. We all are a victim of white supremacy. When we begin to embrace race and color, as this is a creation of a wicked system, if I make black superior, if I make white superior, no matter what you make superior, then it is an evil and wicked system. There are no African religions or teachings I ever heard of, correct me, that make color black superior. Nowhere. You can go to any African nation, you show me any system where black people are in control, where they design a system where white people show up, make them feel inferior. That's just a racist Caucasian. That's a European thing designed to put them into power and to keep them into power. Because they know they are the minority on the earth. You might be the majority in the United States of America, but Caucasian people know they are the minority on the planet. So you need to create a system to keep the darker people in check. So you can enjoy what you stole. Because if these dark people unite, you know your day is over. That's why when I ask black people on YouTube to, to unite, all kinds of Caucasians come from everywhere. Because they know if you unite and this word and this thing begins to, to take hold all over the planet, it's over for them. No more feeling better. I'm not saying go out and kill white folks, but I'm saying now you can take your rightful place and be who you are. We must think for ourselves, accept our reality. Stop being so damn emotional so we can see things more clear. So the brain, so the brain can bring forth a proper solution. And then I hope we can take the advice of the ultimate weapon. Otherwise, the future for both black and Caucasian people is not going to be rosy. It's not going to be rosy. And the only beneficiary is those who have taken advantage of the system we call white supremacy, which is bad for you, black man, and it is also bad for you if you're poor middle class in uh, Caucasian in America and around the world. Thank you for listening.
Jot down your comments. I hope that you understand where I'm coming from. This was a long talk, but it's necessary. I hope that you listen to the whole series. Jot down your comments. I'm Brother Tommy Giver Rob. This was and is. Is a race war inevitable? It should not be. The reality is temple on earth.